appreciate Frankowitz. Very good. Okay, so I came here today prepared to learn about digital. But I want to share three things I've, I've heard this morning. So I took a few notes this morning, so hopefully y'all did too. Three things I heard that I did not come prepared here today to hear. So from Kelly, we are like cows constantly grazing on content. I wasn't quite prepared to hear that today, although I would have been a marketer who voted for her cow image because, you know, that's disruptive. Number two thing I wasn't quite prepared to hear. So and this only applies, you know, Adam said those of you over 30, so this is for those of you over 30, Cavaricci jeans. Hadn't thought about that word since I was probably 15 years old, and so shows a little of my age, but Cavaricci jeans. And then the third and final thing I heard today that I wasn't quite prepared to hear is a deep dive on men and bacon. Like who thought at a women's digital conference we were going to hear about men and bacon? Now I will tell you one story about my husband. I'm a Texan, so if you didn't see my Twitter handle, I am a Texan by birth, so hence my handle. Oh, Texans, I love that. I knew you were a good crowd. And I'm a Longhorn. Any Longhorns in the club? Oh, hook them. Oh, we're, we're friends now. This is great. I'm only presenting to you. The rest of you, sorry, don't matter. Joking. Um, so my husband was making bacon. I've been married 17 years. My husband was, got married very young. We're Texans. We do that thing kind of young. Um, 17 years, I walk down. I have three daughters. My husband's making bacon, which doesn't happen very often. Hence, I would have caught on to this earlier than 17 years. He has butter in the bacon pan. The man is frying bacon in butter. And I'm like, are you trying to kill us all? So, you know, three things I didn't think I'd hear today um, as I came and very enjoyable. So thank you for everybody who was before me. But I'm going to introduce you today to a new concept, an emerging body of research around a new type of energy crisis. And I'm not talking about oil, although I, I am fresh off of a trip from Saudi Arabia. So if anybody wants to talk about that afterwards, I can hang out for a few minutes. We can talk about digital marketing in Saudi. Quite fascinating, another time. Um, but a new type of energy crisis, and it's a human energy crisis. Physical, mental, spiritual energy in terms of a crisis. And particularly, we're going to deep dive into a cohort, a group of people who are more impacted than others, and that's women, we females in the room. So I'm going to do three things today in our time. First, I'm going to talk about this human energy crisis. Second, I'm going to share with you the role that digital is playing and how candidly all of us as digital marketers are contributing to this crisis. And third, I'm going to share a couple of examples of people, including my own company at PepsiCo, that I think are doing this pretty well, some big companies, some small. So those are our three objectives in the time we have. So first, we're all busier than ever. Men and women alike, busier than ever. A couple of statistics for you. If you had a group of women, let's say moms, three quarters, 75%, seven, five, would say, no matter how hard I try, I can't get the things done I need to do. Need to do. Not want to do, not wish to do, not desire to do, not like to do. Need to do. Time.com just refreshed a five-year study. So they did it five years ago. They did it again this year. That said women are 15% more stressed than we were five years ago. So good Lord, we're measuring our level of stress. Who knew? 15% more stress than we were five years ago. So for those of you who participated in my little survey monkey, thank you. It helps to be relevant to the audience. So in this group, those who were surveyed, one quarter of you, 25%, have less than 60 minutes, one hour, of free time every day. 60 minutes. There's other research, by the way, that says of the free time we have, 46%, if you want to get, they always say round up to big numbers, but it's important to be accurate. 46% of you with your free time, it's often interrupted. I'm in the shower yesterday. Don't worry, guys, we're not going to go explicit, but I'm in the shower. My old three daughters, my youngest daughter comes in with two pairs of shorts and says, Mom, which one should I wear? I'm in the shower. <laughs> my second daughter doesn't stop there. This is all in the morning, by the way. It's early. I work out in the morning. It's early. Second daughter comes in. She's crying. She can't find her favorite shorts. I'm still in the shower, and she wants me to wipe off the, the um, what do you call it, the, the steam. I'm like, no, I don't want to see you. I'm in the freaking shower. And then my oldest daughter comes in. So whether you would consider shower me time or not with three kids, trust me, shower is me time, it's often interrupted. 60% of you are tired, so thank the good Lord I'm before lunch, because 60% of you said that you get less than seven, six to seven hours of sleep. So please don't fall asleep on me. Wait till after. 
So it's no surprise that the latest research on mom says, on average, we exist in 39 hour days. So last I checked, we have 24 hour days. So 39 hour days means that you are multitasking up to 15 hours a day. So digital consumption has increased 400% since the year 2000, 400%. So Kelly, I believe that was her name, Kelly who said that 76% of moms say they need more than one screen. We are multitasking, 39 hour days. And you think digital should have been helping this, but what we found is we're actually pinning, checking in, I checked in here today by the way, the Marriott should like that, I'm media, I did a little check in for you. We're checking in, posting, pinning our way to busier than ever. Just today, USA Today, so I know we're digital, but this is a thing called a newspaper marketers. It is somewhat relevant. Um, Snapchat, big feature in USA Today, today on Snapchat. I was shocked when I read this to learn that Snapchat posts 150 million photos a day, 150 million, compared to 40 million on Instagram. 40 million, who knew? So digital is actually contributing to our busyness. Last time, most of you probably flew in here today. So I remember, and this isn't that long ago, I've been flying for a living for a while, let's say two, three years ago, I'd get on a plane and I was so hoping somebody like Adam with all the Vogue and girl magazines he has would have been before me because you know, you check the seat pocket behind, in front of you and you're like, please somebody leave a people for a girl. So I was hoping, this is just three years ago, I'm hoping there's something for me to read. And then you know, plan B is you read American Way. I'm loyal to American, you read American Way. And you might even if you get lit really crazy, do that crossword puzzle and nothing steams me more than wanting to do the crossword puzzle and someone's done it, then I'm mad. I'm like, take the American Way, they tell you they're free. And then like plan C, absolute last resort, is what? What's in the back of the thing? Sky Mall, good Lord, nobody wants to read Sky Mall. So Sky Mall's last resort. So now I have like this altitude meter that we get to 10,000 feet before that little dingy thing goes off that says you can use your computer, I'm on because we're constantly connected. So go, go in flight has changed my life. People who fly without it don't know what you're doing. But that was my free time, my me time. The truth is it's gone because now I'm connected and I'm working. Inadequate. I don't know how many of you saw this. Just last month, today.com did a survey of 7,000. I don't know if the Pinterest guy talked about this yesterday. Um, did he talk about this yesterday, Pinterest guy? No, yeah, because he wouldn't, because I'm about to tell you stuff he probably wouldn't want you to know. So 7,000 moms, they did a survey of 7,000 moms. It's public data, it's not mine, today.com. 7,000 moms, 42% of those moms said they have Pinterest stress. Pinterest stress. Good Lord, pin stress, we'll make up a new word. They didn't say that, so that's ours. Pinterest stress, pin stress is our word. So they're stressed out because they can't live up to this ideal that are these postings in Pinterest. Pinterest is stressing us out. 80% of you are Pinterest users, by the way, so you're stressed out, tired, and a quarter of you aren't having enough free time. So you're a ragged audience, I'm just saying. So there's no surprise that there's this whole movement around slowing down. Okay, we're digital marketers, we're fast. I was gonna wear my solid black today because I know we marketers, we like to wear solid black, but I mixed it up with a little color. So we, we're all about going fast. So there's no surprise that there's a new book out by Carl, Carl Honore that's called In Praise of Slowness. And it's, hilarious. it's actually a funny book that has a serious meaning. And what he says is, we used to dial, now we speed dial. We used to walk, now we speed walk. We used to date, now we speed date. I heard the one-on-ones you had were called speed dating. There's something now called speed yoga. So stuff by its very nature that is supposed to be slow is now fast. And that's the magic. So you hear speed yoga and you're like, that doesn't make sense. That's what we as marketers need to figure out. How are we part of the fast, driving the fast, but giving our consumers a moment, a time out, a breath, some uninterrupted me time? That's the problem we need to solve today. And that's what it means to us. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of examples now and tell you why I think these are good examples of people doing this right. So first two numbers to keep in mind, I already introduced you to one, 39. Moms on average are working, working, active 39 hours a day, 39 hours. When you become a parent, so I know I have a friend in the audience who's about to become a first time mom, when you become a parent, you lose, or you work an additional eight hours a day. Eight hours a day by having a child. Interesting. So where are they spending their time? This is non-working time. 80% of a woman, a mother's non-working time, eight zero, 
is spent taking care of others. This is what we do. And so there is some magic, by the way, to thinking about, you could look at this data and say, oh my gosh, all their time is doing something else. We do enjoy this, just so you know. So Adam, you said I haven't figured women out. We do have caregiver natures in us at our core. There's tons of genetic research that would tell you that, so it's not an opinion. And so there is a trick to how can you make that part of what you're addressing and yet still respect the fact that she has little time. So I'm going to show you an example close to my home in Quaker. So PepsiCo owns Quaker. A Quaker example of how we're trying to respect this caregiver nature, this digital connectivity, and this time-starved time woman. So what we knew is we knew this energy management challenge was a crisis. We knew that consumers are looking for better ways to manage their time. We knew the trend was expressed on people trying to find energy to handle whatever comes your way. So if you've seen the latest Quaker advertising, it's all about fueling you up. We knew that complexity is a problem. Things have to be simple for this consumer. And we also knew that 45% that, that moms are spending 45% more time on social media than gin pop. Let's just round to 50 because we're marketers and we like big numbers. 50, and you agencies, you like big numbers too, so don't exclude yourself. So 50% more time on social media. So this is what we knew. So this is what we did. We found a pretty cool, hip super mom. If you think about Quaker, now you could you know, go back to the Oates days and Wilford Brimley, I think what his name, he was kind of old and curmudgeon -y. Did great for the brand, but it was about cholesterol. So we're also on a, an, on a um, path to modernize our brand. So we specifically went out and found Michelle Branch partnered with Pandora, and did a series on Moms Who Rock. Okay, so that's easy, you know, a little content communication, that's easy to do. So let me tell you how we took it up a notch. We actually had uh, mothers write in, go back to that caregiver mentality, they wrote in their stories about their um, adventures with their children. And we published them. And we thought, who's going to have time to read that? We're so busy. Moms read it, they rated it. Who doesn't want to see, you know, my, my daughters are Parker, Peyton, and Piper. They're alphabetical, which tells you a little something weird about me. Um, but who wouldn't want to see my little sweet girl's names, Parker, Peyton, Piper, in a story, and it's there forever for them? It's great. So that's one thing we did, but we didn't stop there. That was Mama's caregiver. Then we said, okay, Mom, you've heard today, several people today spoke about entertainment. We said, okay, Mom, what would you like us to do for you? We heard a lot about music. So what we did is we had Mom submit their favorite songs, and Pandora curated a list of the 80 favorite songs from moms, and we made it into a station, a mom station brought to you by Quaker, branded, you could have it online, you could have it on your iPhone, but a mom station. Just a moment, a time out, a moment of connectivity for moms. So second example, I started my career at Procter & Gamble, so I know the P&G business quite well. I think there was an, uh, there's no lay person in the audience, so I don't know where you are, but this is Pampers. And I'm not going to go deep on the data because y'all have seen enough data, but I'll just give you the highlights. So what did Pampers know? They knew that moms are trying to simplify their life. Lots of data for that from the Yanklovich monitor. It's tons of data. Second, they knew that this fact I told you that we can never get it all done. The things we need to get done, we can't get done. And finally, they knew that with little time we have, we want a high return on investment for that time. So what did they do? They launched a program, and I'm going to take you through a couple of examples to help mom simplify her life, to support her by giving her information in a community. You heard from, the, from Kelly that people actually trust these ratings and things, and we all know that as, as digital marketers. And finally, we reassured her through tools. So here's the simplify example. Um, there's a global shopping template. I know we're more of a US audience, but you know, in the interest of creating global brands, P&G now has a global shopping template. No matter where you are, you can go online and buy Pampers. We all know, surely y'all all know the data around how diapers was the biggest category that took off online um, first with diapers.com. They've added things that we traditionally see in retail. So um, bonus, benefits, compulsory items. Buy this and you get a free pacifier. So simplifying her life when it's convenient for her to shop. And you know, as moms, you're up at like 2.33 in the morning, so convenience could be middle of the night. Second is they gave her a community. So we all heard of iVillage several years ago. You know, Pampers took that over. It became Pampers Village. 400,000 words of trusted information. So in other words, anything you want to know, this is where you go. Pampers is building their loyalty. I love, my favorite thing is they have this one-on-one -on -one engagement through Facebook, but they thought, I mean, credit to P&G, they thought of everything. 
they have this mobile text for low-income um, families. So smartphone penetration is very high across um, financial demographics. And so to solve for mobile, they actually, or low-income, they actually have a mobile text offer. So support. And finally, reassuring her, whether it's an iPad, an iPhone, okay, so again, I'll show my age and, and the age of my children. I grew up reading that what to expect when you're expecting. Man, that thing was like the mama Bible. I was reading it like today the fingernails grow. I was like, oh, fingernails, it's great. So now you can, it was great, by the way. I don't mean that facetiously. Um, but now you can get all that with full digital, you know, 40 pictures on whatever screen you want to give. So again, reassuring her that she's doing the right thing. So that's an example of a big company. So now let's look at one that Adam referred to very briefly, TaskRabbit. So he was talking about field agent. I also know GigWalk. If you haven't heard GigWalk, they're, they're very similar to field agent. Um, but TaskRabbit is about me as a, as a mom, me as a woman, me as a busy person. It's fascinating. If you haven't done it, you should absolutely go look it up. So you just basically it's hiring somebody to do whatever job you wanted to do. You go in, you describe your task. Are you smiling? Do you use TaskRabbit? But you're you should do it. So let's say I had dry cleaning today. I could go in and say, could somebody please go pick up my dry cleaning? Usually within 30 minutes, oh, and by the way, I'm willing to pay you five bucks to go get it. Within 30 minutes, they'll reply and say, hey, I'm in the area. I'll go get your dry cleaning for five bucks. Let's go. So within 30 minutes, you know, it's amazing. It's like the old um, handyman thing on steroids. I mean, this thing, TaskRabbit, will change your life. Men and women alike, I promise you it'll change your life. You should use it. I don't work for them. I get nothing from them. I'm just telling you it's amazing. Okay, so now Walgreens. So let's talk about Walgreens for a minute. And you heard Adam used to work for Walgreens. So what Walgreens knew is the data I told you that moms are, are very, very connected, 46% um, more connected, 45% on social media. So Walgreens knew this, and, and Walgreens is one of my favorite apps. Again, I don't work for them either. So what they've done is they realized that a person, men or women, either one, that is more active across multiple channels with them is three times more valuable. So in other words, if I can get them to do one thing online, they're three times more valuable to me as Walgreens. So they launched, I love their tag, the corner of happy and healthy, like what a beautiful thing. So they launched an app that you can do a host of things on, and I'm gonna highlight two. First, you can upload your pictures from like Facebook or wherever you want to, and they'll print them for you. Like none of this on the computer thing. You post it to Walgreens and they print. Then I learned from Adam this morning, what I didn't know is on Facebook, if you send them a Facebook, they'll post it with the comments. So if somebody's looking at my girls and say, oh, what a beautiful family you have, I can print that into a picture. I'm not sure I'd want to do that, but just know that you could. So that my favorite one on Walgreens, what I use it for, is this refill in seconds. So literally you scan, so I know we were kind of smashing QR codes just a minute ago, but I love it in this regard. You scan the little code on your prescription, it's instant refill. No one from Walgreens calls me. I don't have to do anything. It just happens. So Walgreens is, again, it's a business purpose. So we're marketers. Our job is to sell product. The business purpose is they're three times more valuable if they will engage with me outside the store in another channel. And this is a solution they came up with. Brilliant. They also have virtual pharmacists. So I remember when I first started working, and I was working for P&G, and I had um, nurse line. So as a phone number I could call and talk to somebody at any time of day. I loved that. This is like the new nurse line. So it's online. You can go in and chat with the pharmacist any time of day, and I can do it from my mobile device. One-on-one -on -one engagement. So their results have been phenomenal. 40% um, of refills now come from mobile. So think about the labor, labor savings. We're all business people. Big labor savings if I don't have to take an order from you. 65% increase. Um, very innovative for a pharmacy company and it's a top 10 downloaded app in iTunes lifestyle category. So they're on to something because people are opting in. So Nike, 40% of you have Fuel Band or Fitbit or something like that. We heard Adam talk about his today. Nike's done a brilliant job inter intersecting gaming with lifestyle. Because look how fun this looks. I mean, it's a gaming platform. They've had Nike Plus, um, Nike Sport Watch, and now Nike Fuel Band. Fuel Band. Think of that name, fuel, because it's about fueling your life. It's because we have an energy crisis, particularly among our women. And they let you set your goals and create a community. So Fuel Band, at the same time, digital marketers, you'll love this part. They cut the media budget by 40%, but increased digital marketing media by 50% over three years. So investing more money into digital, which we all, you know, we, we try to get people to do that all the time. 
Nike Fuel has changed the way that people interact as a community and the way you measure yourself. It's sold out within the first four hours of launch. So you think about an insight. To have a new product today that sells out within the first four hours of launch is remarkable. And one more thing. So the last one I'll share with you. I don't know if anybody, in, the, in fact, I'm going to ask, has anybody heard of Hointer out of Washington? Oh, you haven't. Good. This is my gift. Oh, you have. You have you've heard of it? Have you, have you shopped there? OK, so this is a gift for the rest of you in the audience. So we women, still very true that the two things we most despise shopping for are bathing suits and jeans. Absolutely. So we're not talking about bathing suits. I already told a shower story. I probably crossed the line there. So we're just going to talk about jeans. So Hointer is an ex-Amazon executive that has started this company in Seattle, Washington. And it's about buying jeans. This is a real shot from the showroom. So no inventory, no salespeople, and a lot of assortment of showroom in a very small space. So what you do, and again, we're back to QR codes, and I think this is a great use of QR codes. You walk in with your little Hointer app, you scan a pair of jeans, and then you say, this is the size I want. Within 30 seconds, those jeans are waiting for you in the dressing room, 30 seconds. I didn't have to go find a salesperson. I didn't have to say, oh, do you have my size or not? I didn't have to do any of that. I go in, I enter my size, 30 seconds in the dressing room, and that's still not the coolest part. So then now, let's say I'm in there, I'm trying them on, and I don't like this pair. So I don't just leave them there. I toss them back down a little bin that looks like where you return library books, and it scans them back into inventory. No people. Let's say I do like them. I like these jeans. I want to buy them. I don't have to leave the room. In, in each dressing room, there is a credit card machine. I scan my credit card, walk out the door with the jeans that I love, and I've not had to interact with anybody. I didn't embarrass myself by having to say my size. It's great, because you know women, we always want to get several sizes in there, because Lord forbid you have to go say, can I get the bigger size? Very embarrassing. So this takes all of that away, and you literally scan it back in. So a very different example, so I shared you know, a, a, a content example from Quaker, a very robust, I think, example from Procter & Gamble, a very robust digital example from P&G, or from Walgreens, and now something much more niche that's changing the way people shop. So that brings us back full circle. So we talked about human energy crisis, that we're busier than ever and yet more connected, more engaged than ever. We talked about the role of digital and what we're all doing as digital marketers, contributing to that, and how do we be part of slowing down while we're part of the cause for speeding up, and we talked about several examples. So I think the question isn't, what does this mean to us? The question I leave with you is, what are we going to do with it? And so I happen to look through all the companies and agencies that are here today, and I, I can't wait to see the next 12 months and see how you react, how you become part of this movement of slowing down while consumers are still speeding up. And I look forward to seeing results of your work. Thank you very much.